Greetings everyone and welcome back to Clan Folk. It is the the first of winter year two. We have almost made it through our second year. And as you can see, we've got a lot of unlocks dropping in, and that can really only mean one thing, and that is that a new version has come up, in this case, several new versions, and that has added an awful lot of content. Now, we already knew about uh, bread and flour that was uh, unlocked because we had bought some bread. But we now have a decoration shelf, which I'm super excited for, because this is going to allow us to actually store our decorations in a bit more of a compact way. I believe this can hold up to eight decorations. We've now got a load of new decorations here. Everything here is for decorations. We've got decorations. Decorative tables, which can then further be enhanced by uh, things like rush lights, which tallow uh, builds into. Once you've got tallow, you can build a rush light kit. It's basically a little tallow candle on the on the table, which will make the room look nice, but really not smell nice. As someone who happens to know what a tallow candle smells like, it is a far cry from a beeswax candle. Uh, we've got a large 3x3 three three, uh, straw rug, and finally we have an actual use for flowers outside of simply storing them. Up to now, the herb rack, that, that was just a storage for all things flower. It just happened to look nice, but a, a heather wreath is intentionally a decorative arrangement of flowers. I believe this can also go on tables. Now, with tallow, that it is worth mentioning that this is kind of the tail wagging the dog. In real life, it, gathering tallow is more of a byproduct of cooking meat. In this, you have to intentionally make tallow for which you will also get the byproduct of cooked meat. You need a clay bowl, meat, you basically cook the, the meat, catch the drippings and let that cool. There's a little bit more processing involved, but that's roughly speaking how you get tallow. So that's something that we're going to want to have a look at. The rush light kit will be made from tallow, straw and branches, so we're not going to need too much of it, though I imagine these uh, will. this will be a, a kind of a constant um, resource drain. So in a way, we're going to be constantly working on our uh, on building up tallow and in fact that's one of the first things i'm going to do i'm going to make sure that we've always got five tallow available to us but there is more that we need to do i left you at the end of the last episode with the decision to make on whether we were going to flex by increasing our workers or even just keeping our workers all the way through winter and the vast majority of you were in favor of flexing now, I made it seem a little bit like a simple decision in that, oh, it's just we've got enough food, we could keep the workers. Workers in winter are a different kind of problem, though. There's a little bit more to it in that their mood is a lot harder to manage because they get very unhappy having to work out in the terrible cold all the time. So this is something that we're going to have to work on as a priority. One of the things, if we're going to have four workers all the way through winter as well, we really need private lodgings for those workers. We're going to need a lot of ways to bump their mood up. And there's another reason why I want to make a private lodging for workers as well. Uh, also, the other thing that we're going to do is, as much as I wanted to get out here and grab all of this grass, that is no longer something that I feel we can afford the time to do. Instead, we're going to come down here. We're going to cancel all of these uh, far away jobs to gather grass because I don't want my workers or my clan walking that far away from the settlement. Right now, it's easy enough to do. If we look at the various walk speeds, the path is still a, a nice path to walk on. It does still give us a, a movement boost. Very soon, that's going to be gone away. Once there is enough snow on the ground, it doesn't ma matter what's underneath the snow, the person is still having to slog through knee or waist height snow in order to get anywhere. And it doesn't, it really doesn't matter if there's a nice path underneath or not. It's still hard work and it's still freezing and it's still a miserable experience. So we want to try and keep our clan as close to the, uh, to the house as we possibly can. Now, we will be getting unpaused in a moment. I, I will get to that. But uh, getting rid of all of those jobs is a big one. However, I do still want to try and get something back from the grasses we planted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off harvest only. And I'm going to just mark the areas where there is some grass to harvest. Though there isn't grass to harvest all over here. Some of the places are like seven grass to harvest. Some of it like has one. And some of it is just the grass stubble where animals have been grazing. There isn't an easy way of saying, hey, I want you to harvest 
um, plants, even if they aren't fully mature, but I only want you to bother if there's something to harvest. Unfortunately, this stubble over here has nothing, but I could still make a job, and there are places around here where there is stubble that I've told them to harvest, but I've tried to avoid it where I can. I very much doubt that we're going to get all of the hay that's, that's present here in time, but we'll do our best, and having it this close whilst they've still got a path to get there, that will help out. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to activate the job board because I would like to go from three to four workers. We're going to we're going to give this a, a solid try. But the next and uh, possibly the, the, the update that I am the most excited for is a combination of zones and the vacancy sign. We can now tell the vacancy sign to auto accept travelers. That is a small admin saving for me. But it kind of lends to the idea of having a true inn. People show up, they go into the inn, they take care of all of their, their needs in the inn, and then they leave and pay me in the morning. So we're going to turn on auto accept. However, what I was say, saying about they just do all of their, all of their uh, uh, needs are met in the inn, we're not quite there yet. We do still need the serving table, and that's still locked behind the kitchen. However, we do now have a mechanical way of ensuring that they they just go to the inn and, and take care of their needs at the inn. And that is through zones. We can now add zones. We've all, well, zones have been in the game for, for a long while, but they were taken out because the developer for a time felt that their implementation was a little bit lacking. It added extra complexity and in a way it was almost like a trap for new players. But that the implementation has been adjusted. We've now got two types of zones, the home zone and the work zone. And if you're familiar with games like Dwarf Fortress, then the idea of zones is very similar to the idea of burrows. You can add family members, and if you do, their entire family is, is added. Children, parents, um, uh, spouses. You can add workers, or you can add guests. Now this, in combination with the home zone, is how you can make a true inn. A work zone, it has a niche use. Um, I don't tend to use it, but you can use it to greatly improve the logistics um, of your your kind of workshops. Uh, right now, for as a as a simple example, uh, there have been times when I've had um, straw over here from cutting reeds, and we've tried to make say, oh, for example, twine. A worker would go up here, collect exactly as much straw as they needed for the job come back, make the twine. Well, I, I tend to ask them to keep maintain a stock of twine, a reasonable stock of twine, or maybe they, the next job is to make a, an axe, which again needed twine. So they'd wander back up here to grab the straw exactly the amount and come back. That's an awful lot of walking back and forth and not building something. So a lot of their day was wasted on just traveling. With work zones, I could designate a zone over here and make sure there was a pallet for straw. And... In that case, if there's no straw in the pallet, they just won't try to do the, the twine job. Now, that might seem like it's introducing a uh, uh, an inefficiency in the, in the work schedule. So there's straw available, they just don't see it for that job. But the idea would be that a dedicated hauler would take a hauling job for straw, which would allow them to fill their inventory with straw and bring it back in a single trip, and then probably go back and grab more straw and bring it back in a single trip. So that the crafter would just be going back and forth a very short distance, and most of their time would actually be used for productive effort rather than hauling effort. So you'd have a couple of dedicated haulers who would keep everything running, and then the workers would just have their kind of designated work zones. I believe people can belong to several different zones at once, so you can end up with uh, some overlap to allow for interesting into play but that was the general gist behind zones but with the home zone this is specifically for uh family members or well anyone to um satisfy their personal needs so bathing entertainment socializing and eating that sort of thing with a combination of home zone and guests specifically i could designate this entire area as a one-stop shop for our guests once i've got serving tables in here and those are kept full of food by our workers then guests really would have to go nowhere else but this and it would truly be an in from that point i know i keep moving the goalposts but trust me that's the last goalpost we would need to make now that's uh, a little ways down down the road and in fact we could set up a similar sort of thing for our workers and that's something i feel that we're going to need to do to keep our workers happy but at this point we can finally unpause things now there are a few changes that we need to make from everything with uh the autumn 
I'm going to move down gathering jobs for people who shouldn't have them there or shouldn't have them prioritized. That gathering job should be below uh, harvesting. But for my harvesters, I think having gathering jobs up there is still useful. But I'm going to deprioritize it a bit. I'm going to let them do gathering, but it's going to be one of the last jobs that they do. I don't really want them going out there and gathering too much in winter, so uh, this should be a better setup for them. Gathering is still part of the harvester profession, but I'm going to put that down a little bit lower, behind uh, lumbering and mining and the likes. There they are. They're already getting over here. Hopefully, you'll be able to extract some hay. There should be seven hay from this. There we go. Perfect. Okay, hopefully we can get through most of that before the uh, snow really builds up. Now, there are a couple of other jobs as well. Of course, we've got all of this work to do, and I really, as much as I want it done, I feel that this shouldn't be a priority for us. So I'm going to make sure that's on a three. Good. And how about this? This is on a six. I'm going to drop that down to a... I'm going to say the wall being the furthest one. I'm going to put that on a two. The gates I will set up as a four. So they'll do the gates first, then they'll do the path, and they'll do the wall. I don't imagine we're going to get this done in winter. I want this to be a fairly low priority. If our builders have time to do it, then that would be great. But I don't really expect them to focus on it. At least not for now. I'm also going to cancel this roof build job. What uh, priority do we have there? They should get to that one fairly quickly then. Okay, that's uh, not too bad. Oh, and actually, since we now... I'm going to pause it there for a second. Since we now have uh, wreaths, I don't need those to be built. In fact, I would like to build some other things. Right, let's have a quick look at Annas and Christian, and is there anyone else coming along? No, it's just these two traders for today. Finally, we are into the game. I'm sorry for that long, long introduction there, but there was a, quite a lot of things that changed since the last uh, last uh, couple of versions, so I did want to cover them uh, so you'll understand why I'm doing things the way I'm going to be doing them. Also, let's go ahead and we'll try and keep our money above 2,000, but I'm only really going to sell up to that point because I don't want to create extra jobs for our peeps. Now, straw, we've got an awful lot of straw. Don't need more, but I will happily take the uh, the seeds there. And you know, I'll take the hay seeds too. Uh, should I sell a little bit more here? Yes, we should. There we go. Thank you ever so much. You can be on your way. And we have already unlocked the uh, rushlight kit. That's very interesting. Uh, our rushlight kits are made over here. Okay, that's uh, pretty cool. All right, well, I would like at least two rushlight kits. Uh, sorry, rush light, rush lock kits. Uh, two rush light kits at a time, or maybe I could even go as high as five. But uh, yeah, sure, you know, we'll, we'll make five of them. But I do need to pop down some storage now for the decorations. Where would that be? Uh, there we are, decoration shelf. Now, where do I want to store decorations? Uh, I guess I can pop them over here. Oh, thank goodness. They do, in fact, rotate. That is glorious. I'll just pop two decoration shells over there. I know it's quite far away from some of the other areas. In fact, I'll pop another one down here, too. I, I intend to have a decent amount of decorations being stored. Uh, so let's just get those in a couple of places there. There we are. Now, the other thing that we really, really do need to, to work on is having a healthy supply. We're going to have up to eight people working here. So I want a lot of uh, winter clothes. Uh, the more important ones will be the uh, leather, but I'm going to go ahead and upgrade everything. You'll notice that I'm going for 10 instead of 8, because I do want a fair few spares available as well. But we're going to want 10 of all of these just to make sure that our workers are kept warm. Again, it isn't even just out of the kindness of our hearts. If they keep getting cold, they will prioritize keeping warm because we wouldn't ex expect them to work themselves to death in the snow. Uh, they will prioritize getting warm. If they go out and do a job and then get cold, they'll come back in and spend some time next to a fire in order to heat up again. So by having the... Um, uh, warm clothing for them. It just means that they can stay out and do a job, for example, in the fields for a bit longer before they have to retreat to try and get warm. Now, most of our family have warm clothes on. You can see the uh, hide cloaks. They don't like the hide cloaks. They're a bit smelly, uh, but they, they keep them warm, and that's the important part. Now, we're going to have to give that, keep a very close eye on the uh, general heat levels in here, though. I'm fairly confident in saying that we probably don't have enough heat being generated here so i would like it if we could add in where am i going to place this i would like to uh throw in uh, another heating stove i'm actually going to get rid of yeah i'm going to get rid of that mushroom drying rack 
we are constantly keeping mushrooms on the go, so we shouldn't really need to uh, worry about that one over much. Though that being said, maybe mushrooms is how I could go about uh, getting this all set up. I could put mushrooms in here as a meal, and uh, our guests could immediately just go and grab uh, a, uh, some dried mushrooms as their dinner. That might be a very nice way of doing things. Uh, either way, I do want another tiled peat stove. We'll pop it there so that it's not casting a light down towards the beds at all. There we are. Now that's going to take a little while to do. We're going to need some bricks for that, but we should be able to get those sorted. The other thing I would very much like is to not put food out here. Why? I mean, that is a low priority. If it's out there, it's because it, there's no room in here for it, sadly. Uh, that's just the way that's going to be. Now, another thing that we're going to be working on is trying to expand out our larder. That is a big job for winter, since it's a job that can only really be done in winter. As you can see, the amount of hay that we're going to get back for things is starting to go down quite dramatically. Uh, we've got a little bit of grass over there. I can get a little bit of hay out of. Not enough for me to adjust the, uh, the, the harvesting schedule. But we're going to get as much hay in as we can. Now, as I said, some of the things that I want to work on is I would like to build a proper workers uh, kind of barrack. Uh, well, actually, they'll have their own room, so it'll be somewhat similar to the inn. And additionally, I would like a barn for the sole purpose of storing our hay. Right now, it, it, well, it won't necessarily be necess uh, a problem forever, but right now, our animals can go out there and they can eat hay on the haystacks that are just easily accessible. Once this uh, pasture is fully built, they won't try to do that simply because they won't be allowed out of the pasture. On that note, I do need to make sure that all of the uh, barn doors here... Is that selecting all of them? It shouldn't be. No, it's only selected the barn doors. I do not want animals allowed to move through. All of our workers can, but the animals shouldn't be allowed out of these uh, barn, uh, sorry, these uh, branch gates. That should keep them in here. And that way, they'll only eat the grasses we put in their troughs or the grasses that grow in their pasture. But the wild animals will still go for our hay bales. So I want a dry, uh, dark place for us to store the hay out of the way, and then uh, that'll, that'll be fine for us. I'll probably put the grains in there as well, as I don't believe that they ever really break down. So that would be a nice place to put it. I wonder if uh, flour does. Does flour really break down? I mean, it's going down, but uh, I don't know if it decays due to uh, any particular property of the temperature. So uh, it might be fine in a barn as well. So since that's probably going to be one of the easiest things for us to set up, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, the way we're going to do this one, I'm going to want a window. It's going to be just a three-wide building. How many is this? One, two space one two yeah that should be good enough i think and we'll pop a little door of here we may as well go for a wood door as well now at this stage i could unlock wooden windows uh our current windows don't really add much but if we have a look in here there are wooden windows that i could go for and i believe that they are even nicer however the thing with wooden windows and actually going for that at all is that it's really a luxury right now and I think our time would be better spent on other things. In fact, there is one other thing that has been added that I didn't cover. And that is baby blankets. Oh, sorry, baskets. Well, I, mean, I imagine there's going to be a baby blanket in the basket. So it probably, I'm only half wrong there. But uh, that is unlocked by the double sleep mat. This is a double bed just made of straw. So this would be the earliest form of bedding that you could give a couple and them still have children. So that's why it's a prerequisite for the baby basket. The perfect first bed. Now, I'm not sure if this would actually be better for the baby than a regular bed, but I can only imagine it would be because there's less room for them to get lost and fall out or get, you know, tangled up in their blankets. I think, you know, the idea of th there being a basket right next to the parent's bed with the baby swaddled inside so some blankets, of course, you know, eventually inside the clan's tartan, that just makes me happy. So I'm going to spend my uh, skill points on unlocking that. And uh, hopefully we can get that one straight away. There we go. That's all unlocked. I'm going to have to have built one of those, I think, to be able to unlock this before that's even available to me. So it's kind of an annoyance, but all right, let's throw one of these down just so that we can, and then we'll immediately uh, break it back up. I'll just pop it over there. Also, we want to take these gong places down there as well. Let's get everything down here for now. Uh, we're go probably going to want another two composters there, if I'm perfectly honest. We we got a lot of uh, a lot of poop-related stuff that needs to be stored. 
There we go. Let's just move all of that down. How is things going over here? Have we got any hate, more hate to gather? We really do not, so there's no more point in us being out here. It's that fast. You lose plants that quickly to the winter. I do believe we only have one person who's currently focused on building, though, which is a little bit of a problem, especially now that we really don't need a lot of harvesting being done by our workers. Uh, since we're probably going to be swapping them out fairly soon, I'm not going to uh, worry about changing them for the time being. Honestly, if they do nothing else but just immediately jump down to hauling, I'm actually happy for that. They'll get a lot of hauling done uh, uh, much, much faster. And I'd be happy to get all of that work done. But uh, I would very much like to see uh, get, uh, starting to branch out the worker roles and having some builders, for example. But with all of that done, uh, let's have a look. Are we storing... Oh, there we are. We're storing the Rush uh, the uh, rush Light Kits. I keep saying Rush Lock Kits. Uh, with that, we can now unlock the Baby Basket. There we go. We've got two, uh, two expectant mothers. So let's actually check in on that. Kyra, how are you doing? Uh, you are about halfway through your pregnancy. Amira... Uh, Night Owl, where are you? You're about one third through your pregnancy, though you've switched rooms again, you scallywax. Damn it. Right, we're gonna change those over. There we go, grab you, and that one's gonna be for Elrond. There we are. I'm so sorry. Uh, could you instead go to your room now that you know that it's there? Look, this is the way we set them up, and I'm very finicky about such things. Right, let's uh, go ahead and find the baby baskets. Well, there we go. How big of a structure? Oh, that's perfect. Uh, do you want it at the foot of the bed, closer to the side? Yeah, I kind of want it close to the side, but I'm going to put it at the foot for now. Can we rotate it? We can. But I'll just pop it there. There we go. That'll be uh, ready for, for when the mothers give birth. Now, we've only got 39 days of food. Hopefully, we're going to get another worker soon. But uh, works in winter, that really does, uh, it does put a, a stall on how frequently people want to come to your colony. No one really wants to be doing long treks in the middle of winter for rather obvious reasons, really. We have, yes, one job seeker. Well, marvellous. Well, let's first see what we've got in terms of trading. Uh, we've got a ram there. Don't actually want a ram right now uh let's see we've got some meat don't need any of it we've also got a rooster definitely don't need a rooster uh okay well we are shy a bit of cash so let's bring us back up to 2000 there you go thank you very much and uh, oh i will absolutely take the bread won't say no to that. i'll also buy the heather frankly uh, a bull no, I don't think there's a, a need for us to accept a bull for now. But we've got Agnes the Worker. No negative traits. Let's have a look at what you like. You're very into lumber. You don't like hunting. That's fine. We're not going to be doing a lot of hunting in the winter, though we will be doing some of it. Okay, let's take you on. Now, since we actually have a spare bed, I don't need to say goodbye to anyone yet, so we're just going to accept you. And now that we've got you here, I'm going to set you up as probably a builder, so you'll help out Amira. There we go. Agnes will be our first uh, non-harvester worker. Now, there is quite a lot of jobs to do, and you're going to be fairly far away from the settlement whilst doing all of it, which uh, is going to be a little bit of a problem for us. But uh, hopefully we have got a bit of a head start on the clothing that you need. In fact, we're working on these ones now. We've got seven of most of them at this point, which is actually pretty nice. We, we've got, I was going to say, we've got ten of something, but it's sacks. You can't wear sacks. Oh, sack cloth, I guess, isn't that far away from it. But uh, sadly, no, that's not going to work out for us. But we've got uh, work to do on the barn, so I shall bring you back when that that's done, and hopefully, in the meantime, no one's going to get miserable from the cold. We will see. It's rather awesome watching the entire herd just returning to the stable for the night. It, I don't know why that makes me happy to see, but it does. We're making some reasonable, pro reasonable progress over here on the barn, in fact, to the point where I feel confident in setting up the roof as well. So we'll pop down a uh, nice hay roof there to keep things nice and dry. Uh, things are starting to get into place over here. We've still got some fur outside, though. Is every single clothing basket full? Oh, my lord, so it is. Ah, uh, we've got far too many clothes. Uh, well, in that case, then, I'm going to need to add some more clothing into the... Uh, living spaces for our colonists, which isn't... Uh, sorry, the bedrooms for the colonists, which isn't exactly what I want to be. Oh, a new baby cat! Fantastic! Where is the kitten? Now, that's one of the other nice things about having these uh, beds over the place. We've got spares now. 
Ah, you can see the temperature bleeding out here. The temperature in here is awfully cold. Fantastically chilly, in fact. What's the temperature outside? It's minus 16 with a wind chill, taking it as low as minus 30. All right, that is far, far too cold. The main house was only barely kept warm. Desperately need more, more dry peat. How is this going? Okay, we're getting peat along the way, but we're going to have to start being much more proactive in gathering peat to make sure that we don't run out of any over over the winter. This is now going to be a fairly high priority job. So let's set that one up over there. Now, we definitely need it down here in the in the uh, animal barn because there's a lot of animals that will struggle should uh, should winter get too bitterly cold. I'm not too worried about up here because we've got so many workstations that are also kind of generating a little bit of byproduct heat for us that by and large, even though this is a massive area, we shouldn't struggle too much to keep that warm. But there we go, we've got some uh, peat bricks and uh, all of the peat ovens have now been uh, set up. That's perfect. We've got two workers. Oh no, one trader and a worker. Or two traders and a worker, that's not too bad. We've got Matthew here from Clan Forbes. You've brought two dogs and a sow hmm i'm not going to take uh, a sow though i am tempted because you're you're just into adulthood which means we'd have a long time to find you a boar but winter is the wrong time i think to start uh, start caring for pigs that they are probably the most in my mind the most luxuriant of all of the livestock because they are just meat. They do nothing else through their lifetime except be meat when they die. Whereas everything else produces some sort of uh, some sort of uh, good for the colony outside of having to kill them. So uh, that's probably going to be one of the last last ones that we go for. Uh, Colin, you also a worker as well. You're a trader. Uh, it looks like you might, in fact, yeah, we've got two job seekers. Okay, let's have a look. Elizabeth, you're jolly. That's fantastic. And Colin has no particular downsides. All right. Well, this is a good opportunity for us to say goodbye to some of the happier workers that we have. Now, Alexander, you're jolly, and you're also 51 a day. You're going to be 33, and you're going to be 47. Okay, so Alexander, you've been fantastic here at the clan. Thank you ever so much for all of your hard work. But it is, in fact, time for you to leave so uh, alexander goodbye and then colin you will be replacing i guess we could say goodbye to annabelle or adam uh who has got the the more useful skill set amongst you i would say that annabelle right now is the better one to keep and so adam we're gonna say goodbye to you uh so there we are goodbye to adam and we're gonna take both colin and elizabeth Welcome to the clan, the two of you. I will get you set up with beds in just a second, but first I need to get your skills sorted. Right, there we go. I have set up Elizabeth to help out with the housekeeping, as they already have uh, a keen interest in repairing, uh, but Agnes is already working on uh, repairing, and I feel that the double interest and double uh, skill speed of lumbering fits better for the building role, but uh, that, there was a strong uh, desire to uh, change Elizabeth up to builder there. But uh, for Colin, we're going to go with craft. I don't have any particular interests in that, but we just don't need a farmer right now. So Annabelle is going to remain as a harvester. Agnes is now helping Amira out with building. Elizabeth is going to be helping out Elrond and Katz with housekeeping. And Colin is going to be helping Bentham with the crafting. And with all of that done, we should have uh, a good set of hands to do all of the necessary work that we've got to do. Uh, I can see the temperature rising back up to 18 degrees in here. That's very 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 nice it's only a mild minus 10 with the wind chill outside so it's uh, not much of a test yet but hopefully with the peat stove and the fire going that should be able to keep the barn at a, at a good temperature oh fantastic some more peat bricks i will absolutely accept all of that we're now at the point where i can sell some of the clothing that we've got don't need to though so not going to not yet anyway uh do we have an adult ram ready for s yes we do and winter blades still got a fair bit of life in them they're only halfway through their life so uh we're going to be saying goodbye to this uh recently adult ram there honestly we need to get to the point where we're actually making use of the wool that our our um sheep are producing and on that note 
I guess I could do that now. I've been holding off on getting the iron tools for awfully long. And I think it's time for us to make use of it. I could even just sell the raw wool if I have to. We're going to grab shears. Right. Now that we've got shears, I'm going to tell you to maintain two of them. Uh, there we are. Two shears at any one time, please and indeed thank you. Uh, you can head off, though, I believe. Though we need to top up our money a little bit. Will you buy anything that we produce? You don't. That is a bit of a pain, actually. Um, I guess I could sell some smoked meat. Uh, I mean, it's not, not something that we really need to worry about. I've got plenty in my inventory. Sure, we'll say goodbye to these. I know I bought them. But uh, of all of the... Actually, thinking about it, I suppose I could sell the tallow. The tallow does go for a decent amount, considering I'd make it as a byproduct. Uh, sure, we'll sell that along, and I will say goodbye to a bunch of branches just to bring us back up over 2,000. There we go. Thank you ever so much. Oh, talking about branches, though, another thing that has changed is the timbery, when making branches, now produces bark. So that you don't have a reliance on just making planks, even if you don't need them, purely to get access to extra bark. That was, uh, that was a big one. I'm very, very happy with that. But we've still got plenty of work to do on the current jobs. We're not ready yet to start working on the uh, workers' accommodation. So I will bring it back when we've made a little bit more progress. And we've unlocked both wool dressing and clean wool. The wool dressing station devoted to skirting, scouring, and combing raw wool into clean wool. Now, I imagine we're going to be able to sell the clean wool, but not the raw wool. Now, rain will stop it, so it needs to be under a roof, and cold will also stop it, which is a bit of a problem in the middle of winter. Going to have to find a spot for you, then. Where on earth are we going to put that? Uh, you know, oh, and we've unlocked the peat stack as well. Oh, that's fantastic news. I was very concerned about not having a dedicated place to store the peat. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a peat stack. Is This is going to, once again, allow us to store several stacks worth of peat bricks. And having that indoors where it's nice and warm, again, the warmth being key, will be a huge, huge help for us. Um, I'm actually thinking of removing that storage area then given that and it's high time that we remove that general storage as well and instead i'm going to move that up here let's pop the general storage here i'm going to say this is a fairly low priority but you know if someone's got something to haul they can put it all in there uh the wool though that is a bigger problem um let's have a look how big is is this it's quite large and i can't put it here because it overlaps i could put it here though uh, but it would kind of get in the way, I feel. All right, I've got an idea. All right, let's uh, scooch you over. You can go there, and then we'll have the wool dressing station there. I know it's in the middle of the of the living room, effectively, but uh, when needs must, we don't have enough room elsewhere yet to do that. Where are you heading off to, Kalina and Amira? Uh, you are heading down to gather what, exactly? You are... I'm not sure actually well, oh you're gathering straw was this straw just out in the fields oh it must have been from when we uh cut back all of the reeds down here however i did notice oh, the shears as well why are the shears out there what on earth is going on have you been shearing the wildlife we've got sheep for that you know all right it is sunrise on the fifth of winter we've just got a new baby deer hound that is absolutely wonderful we've also expanded out our tool racks because i've noticed that the shears are just being left wherever and that really can't uh, can't be allowed and we've started to move everything into the new barn as i expected we're easily able to store all of the grains in here we've even got the flower pallet i would like another grain pallet in there as well actually uh so let's find you there we are another grain pallet right up out there and we only have one more roof tile and then this room is pretty much ready to go we've put down quite a few rat traps because i imagine we're going to have a bit of a rat problem in there that being said it would be easily uh sorted out if i just had a cat living in there hmm. but it's not going to be a very warm place and i wouldn't necessarily want to have to heat it up either that being said these rooms are easily managing the 18 degrees that we need so perhaps I could do that. And we do need an extra cat bed. Oh, no. Uh, let's have a look at you. Heavy sleeper tireless. Gets tired more slowly. Sleep is not disturbed by noise. Ooh, those both sound like good things. And I'm not going to make the mistake of last time not getting to you fast enough. So it is time for us to finally say goodbye to Annabelle. Let's have a general look at our workers' satisfaction. They are actually all really happy. 
uh, if you're not uh, familiar with playing this game, you probably don't realize how much of a flex that is. Having, we're in the middle, middle of winter right now, it's as cold as it's going to get, and all of our workers aren't just okay with it, they are positively glowing with excitement for, for working in such a wonderful clan. I imagine if we had any any uh, eligible bachelors and bachelorettes, they would be falling over themselves trying to uh, become a new member of the clan. That is absolutely marvellous. But we're going to have to say goodbye to Annabelle. 53 a day, not too, uh, too sad about that one. Goodbye, Annabelle. Thank you ever so much for all your work. And Duncan, welcome to the clan. Only 45 per day. You are, however, going to immediately be set up with Annabelle. Bell's skill, so we're going to be going for a harvester there. There we go. Duncan is all set up with the harvester skill set, and then I noticed that there's another uh, job coming along. I should have waited to see what skills, uh, sorry, uh, Sibella would uh, have, but we'll we'll check that out in a moment. Uh, nevertheless, you can actually sell tallow. We don't need it. I will take the oat flour, though. I will possibly take the flax sheaf as well. No, I won't. Uh, oh, no, I will. I just noticed you're willing to buy planks, so this is our opportunity to top up the coffers. In fact, we're going to go as far as to 500. Uh, you actually have no more money uh very well i will sell you something that you'll take i'll sell you the bark there okay we're near as damn it really i guess i uh, no there's, there's no point in uh, worrying about it that that's good enough for us for now thank you ever so much we have just done an awful lot of trading and so uh our harvest is going to have an awful lot of work to do restocking our planks how many logs we've not got enough logs for that really uh sibylla your you have no particular skills so that's not a not a, a concern for us then let's uh close down that sign no longer want that one up and running but i am going to have to set up a uh, order for some trees to be chopped uh, at this point, like I said, because the paths no longer really confer any kind of walking bonus, it's literally the closest trees. So let's just chop those down wherever we can, in more or less a circle around the colony, around the main part of the uh, of the clan. There we go. That should give us more than enough uh, logs for us to take care of everything. We still need a couple of large stones, but uh, little by little we're actually getting all of this set up in here. Uh, the next thing I would very much like is a vent, so let's pop that in place. I'm going to make that a fairly high priority. I want that one done sooner rather than later. And additionally, we're going to want some cat beds, so cat bed right in there. Hopefully this is going to be warm enough for you. Uh, that one's already a priority seven. Now, we've got some animals to name. We've got a kitten and we've got a papa. Please, everyone, welcome Platinum Toast and Eli FCR to the clan. Though at this point, I am starting to worry how old Orestes is. They're almost a senior now. Uh, I imagine they go into senior status. It's not simply that uh, they they reach the end of adult lifespan and then that's it for them. Uh, much the same way as the clan, though I can't be 100% certain about that one, so hopefully... Uh, this is not going to be a, a sudden sudden heartbreak for us as uh, a puppy enters the clan and then a doggo leaves it. But uh, nevertheless, I guess that's just the way the life works sometimes. Right, we are shy on logs, so we're going to need a fair few just to finish off a uh, last couple of uh, grain pallet items. Do we need more hay bales? I mean, having more hay bales is always a good thing, but I don't think we need to prioritize it right now. What's the temperature in there? 17.8. That is plenty good enough for a kitten who will be spending the night guarding uh, hay bales from rats. But we have, for all intents and purposes, finished the uh, the uh, hay barn over there. So now it is time to work on the next most important thing to do, and that is something that we can only do in winter, and that is to expand out our larder. Now, as I previously mentioned, each jug pretty much cools one tile down to minus uh, six degrees all the way through the year. As long as you don't have more space to cool than you have cooling for it, then it'll last all year. And in fact, you can introduce more water and then that will freeze again. It, it doesn't simulate the transfer of, of energy that faithfully. But uh, as a consequence, it's a fairly easy job to plan. So I'm just going to pause that there. For each pallet, which can hold six, you can basically think in terms of one pallet gives you one two by three area of cooling. 
And I would like to expand this out in both directions. The reason for that is I would like one wall where I can have uh, storage along the wall, then an island of storage, and then another wall with storage, with room enough to walk around. And so that's going to need three of these tall. And uh, that will use all three of the parts that we've currently got. And I'm going to want maybe another three. Let's go for nine. I think that would give us more than enough storage. Honestly, that would give us way too much. We'd, we'd be absolutely crazy wealthy as a clan as a consequence of that. But I guess there's worse things that you could be. Uh, so there and then another two by three over here. And that will be the ex the uh, shape of our larder going forward. Now, with that, we're going to need quite a lot of cooling. We're going to need exactly nine tiles as it happens. How many tiles have we got here? That's four, five, ten, twelve pallets of cooling. Now, I, I am a big believer in more cooling is better, having the extra cooling. If I need to, I can take some ice jugs out of there and thaw that for some reason. But just having more, I feel, is, is safer. Especially because we're not going to have the cooling effect of the natural cave walls to help us completely. We'll keep whatever cave walls we can, but we're obviously going to need to build an exterior wall over here. We do have the wool dresser up and running. So at this point, uh, you know what? I don't think there's ever a reason to have just more wool sitting around. So I'm just going to set up a repeat order and just uh, process that wool as soon as you possibly can. Please and indeed, thank you. And while all of that is going down, I guess that is one other thing that we could do. And that is just pop up some of the decorations. Uh, if nothing else, let's go ahead and pop in some corner tables in these rooms that we're going to hopefully be able to put some uh, nice uh rush lights on and actually make use of the rush lights but i'm very happy to have that room up and running once this one is dug out uh i should possibly even consider starting to add in the wall right now and i guess that would be reasonable we're going to go ahead and get rid of that storage from there i'm going to move that a little bit further up corpses can go over there instead and we will build out our wooden walls. Uh, that being said, we don't have any logs to speak of, so maybe I need to uh, wait on those being uh, being chopped down before we get down to that. How many planks have we stockpiled? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I still favor keeping a very healthy stockpile of planks because we're eventually going to start using them a lot, but uh, for now, that is a bit of a problem, I guess. Okay, I have decided to move the uh, the herb rack out of here and put in a water dipper so our guests can slake their thirst in the inn itself. And as you can see, the rush lights have already been set up. That is absolutely marvellous. I wonder how long that lasts, if it lasts forever. If it does, that's very economical, I must confess. Uh, though we are very short on water, and that's not a great thing. I think I'm going to... Well, I can't actually set up maintaining water, sadly. These will naturally uh, uh, thaw, and in fact, it looks like they're going to thaw fairly quickly, so I'm not too concerned about that one right now. Uh, the further thing for us to do is we are starting to get a little bit low on peat bricks, so I need to top that that up again let's uh, get another harvest patch going for peat and we're just going to keep moving this back now this will regenerate over time it takes a little bit of time for it to happen but it will happen so it's not something that we need to be desperately concerned about and in fact the bog iron does regenerate as well you get one bog iron out of each one but you need quite a few to crush into uh, iron ore now one thing i'm going to do over here is i'm going to tell them to stop storing loose stones if we can't store it in the regular storages then don't store it uh, that stuff is taking up absolutely staggering amounts of space. Uh, on that note, though, we will go ahead and we will add in some more uh, stone piles. In fact, I'll pop in two of them because we've got stupid amounts of stone available. But it's really the logs that are holding us back. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to shrink this zone a little bit. You can see that we have got some clean wool already. Hopefully, we'll be able to sell some of that. But uh, I need to pull this back just a wee bit, right about there. Because we've got two idea points, and you know what two idea points means? That means we're going to be unlocking something, and right now it's going to be the tailor's bench. So let's go ahead and pop this one down. Tailoring bench can go up here. Oh, well, color me surprised. It actually takes up three spaces. Uh, well, I guess it's going to have to fit in there for now. There we go. Once we've got that going, we can pretty much do away with the clothes zone. I'll have to set up all of the uh, the the supply jobs once again. Now, that being said, I guess I could put it down here, couldn't I? Hmm. That might be the better place to put it, thinking about it. 
So yeah, I'll uh, walk back on that. I, I very much dislike it when I when I do that, when I uh, change something up and then change my mind. But uh, this will have the advantage of the high shelf being right next to it as well. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to pop a tailoring bench in its place. Hopefully they can get that done fairly quickly. And in fact, we'll be able to put something else, another storage receptacle right there if I uh, am lucky enough to that end. Maybe instead of putting these down here, I will move them aside because I do believe the tailoring bench will come with his own storage much like the supply shelf which will be a two um a two by one storage so we'll probably want to keep that room available so i'll go ahead and pop some stone piles up here there we go i was going to take logs to do which obviously we're in fairly short supply of but thankfully the tailoring bench does not need logs it needs planks it needs iron ingots and it needs nails and all of these things we have in freakish abundance how are we doing for food down we're doing perfectly well for food and the temperature is managing to be maintained despite the wind chill out there of minus 18 we're keeping everything inside at a quite a balmy 18 degrees and how about over here well, we're not doing as great over here honestly but uh, we are we're doing okay we've got water jugs they have now thawed which i'm very happy with and we've got some traders as well you now have a sow piglet actually tempted but once again, not a breeding pair. So we're going to say no to that. I will take the raw fish and I will take the eggs, though. There we go. Let's bring that in. We're still at 39 days of food, which is frankly amazing when you think about it. Uh, let's see around. Uh, we'll probably hunt to this evening. I'll have a quick look around right now, see if there's any movement that catches my eye that isn't wolves. I don't want to go out and hunt wolves if I can avoid it as if for only uh, the the simple fact that it's very energy inefficient because frankly Arrestes and uh, Malachi will take out wolves when they inevitably get hungry and try to wander too close to the the clan uh, do we want to sell anything here I'm going to say no we've got plenty of cash right now so uh, you can be on your way thank you very much for dropping by though all right now that we've got some uh, extra decorations available in here it's time for us to see what the hair that we is like we can pretty much put that on any wall we want uh well the difference is that putting a wall height up gives us indoors of 20 this only gives us indoors of 30 but it's not bad it takes a lot less uh, materials to make 20 heather there instead of five dry hide and dry hide is a much harder resource for us to get hold of right now and heather we can just farm eventually if we want to so i'm going to put a little heather wreath above the bed for each, uh, each person there. there. We'll, we'll do something like that. That way it's nice and close. There we go. It'll look lovely, I think. Let's get all of that set up. Now that's going to draw quite a lot of heather out of our stored heather stockpile out of our herb racks. Now that we've committed to getting the tailoring bench up and running, we've got to get a spinning wheel and then we've got to get a loom. So we're more or less signing off on getting the uh, kitchen and the serving table up and running. I know that might be a little bit of a disappointment, but honestly, I'm not really sure that we need it just yet. Looking at all of our workers they're all in very very high spirits despite it being winter that's the biggest thing that has changed my mind on it is not even for the inn but rather for the workers cottage that we will be building i was thinking getting a, a serving table up and running in there would be pretty much required but for the food that we give our guests we can probably uh, downgrade our, our aspirations a little bit with that uh i would like to move the kitten out of there for now though let's pop the kitten where we're gonna have you set up let's have our kitten uh over here you can go and sleep over there i think we're gonna move the branches across and i'm going to have a serving basket for dry food it is actually the eighth of winter i'm really surprised that we've made uh, such progress let's have a look at these rooms now the happy the environment on this tile is now 40 thanks to the the heather reeds this room is actually really nice, 135. It's not quite as uh, wonderful as that room, but it's getting there. This room is 290, 300 in this room. That's gorgeous. Absolutely marvellous. And that will only get better as we add nicer items in there. It's probably that the doors here are just like uh, curtains, but 
Well, it's the best way for us to keep the, the temperature where it needs to be, so I'm not going to really uh, apologize for that one. It's for their own benefit at the end of the day. But uh, this should make sure that we've always got one stack of dried mushrooms. In fact, I'm going to say two stacks of dried mushrooms in the inn, and with that, we can at last set up a new zone. Right, this is going to be a guest house. We'll call it a guest house until we've got a proper serving table. And then it can be called an inn. We will add guests to this zone, and I will make it a home zone. So let's add in the tiles. This whole area can be the home zone for the guest house. There we go. Perfect. I think that is going to be wonderful. Um, in terms of the jobs that can be done here, I'm not going to worry about that. It's just guests are automatically going to be added to this zone. But everyone else should be able to go in there. We'll have to see how that works. Uh, hopefully that will function the way that we're, we're intending it to. Uh, all jobs should be available. In fact, I can toggle all jobs on just in case, I, I suppose. We'll turn them all on uh, just to make sure that everything is okay. We don't have any icons for a couple of the jobs there, though. That's a bit of an interesting one. But hopefully everyone will be able to take care of that even though they're not a member of the zone it should only affect them if they have a zone set because then they will only do work in that zone if they don't have a zone set then they should be uh whoever wants to to go and do work in that area can do we've got new baby sheep and new traders who've brought logs of all things thank you ever so much i'll also buy the uh, mushrooms that you've got uh, we don't need to take anything else, so thank you very much for dropping by. We have got a hen and a rooster. Now that is exceptionally tempting. Especially considering it's the ninth of winter right now, so we could, if we would like to, get a hen and a rooster. Get them set up in the barn. It's warm enough, and we're about to head into spring. Okay, yeah, I think it's time. This is time for us to start taking uh, chickens into the colony. Now, let's find those chickens, because they won't be able to get in here right now by themselves. I have to give them a, uh, an express uh, order to go in there. There we go, let's send you in. And the reason for that is that we don't yet have a critter door. You need a small critter door to let chickens out. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to need to move some things around. Uh, let's move these gong places down here. And I think I'm going to put the small critter door, for example, there. Or I could just move the window across. Uh, we'll probably put the, the, the critter door over here. I think that should be fine. Uh, let's have a look. Do I have that unlocked? I don't yet have it unlocked. That's a bit of a problem. Now, you may notice that I'm re-roofing this whole area. Now, there is a very, very big reason for that one. And uh, that is that I need a roof that can travel three tiles unsupported. And hay can do that. The stone roof cannot. So I'm just going to replace all of this with... Uh, sorry, uh, all of this with straw. This one is fine because it's a very small room, so that one should work. But all of this needs to be replaced with straw roof in order to allow us to actually uh, be able to build that large of a kitchen. It's going to be an incredibly large area that will give us absolutely staggering amounts of food throughout the year. So I'm, I'm really happy with getting that done, but it is going to be less efficient as a freezer because of its size. That being said, they're actually making fantastic uh, progress on getting all of this set up. I'm really happy with that. Uh, we've still got a lot of... Uh, tasks to cut down uh, trees outside so that's going to be something that we're going to be working on for a little while and the, the wall down here is, is going to be on the back burner for a little bit because we've now got so many other building tasks that are going to take priority these again are fairly low priority jobs intentionally because they're so far away from anything so uh, we're just going to have to wait and see how long it takes us to finish that probably sometime in spring if my guess is uh if i were to guess okay we've got two idea points and that means that we can grab the next important item in tailoring and that will be the spinning wheel this will spin fibers into hanks let's get that unlocked and placed down it'll be under clothes now how big of a structure is this it's a two by two structure which does mean that it's going to be a little bit more awkward for me to get in up to those tools if i were to build it when i want to so maybe i should build it over there instead in fact on that note i could afford to move this over there as well thinking about it uh that is probably a better thing to do and then i can place this between the two well actually you know the the hide 
Rack could probably afford to just go right there. That gives us so much more space to play with here. That uh, will be quite wonderful. Now there's uh, the critter door that we still need to unlock, which I believe is one idea point that we have a quick look. It's right at the top, yeah, a critter door. We need to get that before our chickens can go outside, but we don't need our chickens to go outside for them to be able to, to be taken care of, so I'm not too concerned about that one. Uh, how many guests have we got today? We've got two guests today. We do need a lot more straw for all of these repairs. How much hay have we got? We have got, frankly, enormous amounts of hay. I think I may have overprepared. I'm going to be honest with you. That being said, our food is actually dropping uh, a reasonable bit at this stage. Uh, quite a couple of people in here just uh, enjoying themselves. Uh, they have been eating the dried mushroom. Let's have, actually have a look at our guests. Uh, entertained too bright. Oh. Well, I didn't realize that. Okay. Private room, comfy bed, entertained. All right. Okay. Well, we don't want these tables then. That's a little bit of a shame, if I'm uh, perfectly honest. But uh, we can just uh, store these for now. Get these out of the rooms. All right. I was kind of assuming that these would be like comfortable little lights that they wouldn't much mind, but uh, duly noted, we're going to need those in other rooms, other spaces. Uh, so we'll just get rid of those out, out of these rooms. That's, that is a shame. I guess in a bigger room, this tiny little light wouldn't really reach our, our guests' uh, faces. But let's have a look at Isabel. Uh, clan reputation of only one. Thirsty, large room. Uh, have you not got water? Oh, no. Fireside, which is quite nice. Relaxing, which is very good. But we definitely need this to be... Ca oh, that's only a 5 in priority. How did that happen? Let me make that a priority 8 right away. My good lord. Hopefully we can get the corner tables and the, uh, the rush lights brought in. But on that note, I think given that, we're going to want to put down some uh, wool hide, for example, underneath each of these beds. Let's go ahead and do that. Get these down. We'll take them around there. There we are. So that people... Uh, this will replace the, the little corner tables that we can no longer place in. We will eventually be able to do things like wall hangings. And uh, especially tartan wall hangings. I think that will be particularly nice for the inn. That's a bit of a power move. You sleep in a room covered in our tartan. Just to remind you of who's, uh, who's in this is. Uh, hopefully it will uh, be received well. Uh, we've almost got all of the pallets done. That is a big big win for us. Let's have a look at you. Are you actually... What's the temperature in here? Oh! Uh, the temperature in here is... Oh, okay, it's starting to warm. It's the 10th of winter. It is starting to warm. We didn't gather enough water fast enough. That is... That is a pain. But it is not an... Uh, a, a, a complete loss. It means that we're going to have to forestall setting that up the one thing that we really wanted to get done this winter while it was cold enough and we haven't managed to do it i feel a bit of a fool for that one but we have an extra option and that is to put two extra pallets for water in here that will store water and then allow it to freeze and then we'll bring that frozen water across there uh we'll set this up in fact to store specifically ice and only ice in those ones. These can store ice or water, I suppose, but no empty jugs. And likewise, over here, no empty jugs. That's good. Uh, so, water or ice... Oh, well, actually, no. Only water in these ones. So, they should have water brought to them. And then promptly ferried out where they need to be. But that is quite the shame. We didn't quite get the larder done in time. There were too many other things that I was focusing on, unfortunately, and winter does sometimes take quite a while to, to get through. Still, I feel we've made quite a lot of progress, and we might still get a little bit uh, of work done. There is still going to be one cold night yet to go. Uh, hopefully we can bring all of these uh, wool hanks in before the, they degrade, because that is, that is literally cash money right there. Cash money getting getting uh broken down ah thank goodness thank you very much i was quite a, quite concerned if i am perfectly honest all right hopefully we will have these brought in uh, i'm gonna set well now that i've set these up not to accept water the water should be brought in fairly quickly but we'll we'll have to see uh, i'm going to need an awful lot of jugs though obviously and that's one thing that i didn't get on and that was a bit silly of me really uh let's go ahead and set up 24 jugs. There we go. We'll get that in this. It's generally a good idea to make jugs in multiples of six, just because that's how much they can store in one time. But otherwise, 
things are starting to thaw out in the world. Look at that. The movement speed is returning to the path. Oh, this is glorious. All right, well, I guess then one of the last things that we need to do is plan a much bigger farm. This one, of course, will be for planting uh, flax, I'm thinking. We'll have oats over here. But really, we need a much larger oat field. So I'm going to till a fairly large field this time. Let's go for... Sure, we'll make a double-sized field over there for the oats. This one uh, we will probably use for something like heather, I'm thinking. So we'll have flax, heather... And then a massive field for oats, and that should do us well into the new year. All right, it is the last night of winter and the last chance for us to chill these water jugs. I very much doubt we're going to be able to get all of that sorted, though, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, let's make sure that we... Oh, my lord! Christian has been born! Well, that's not going to be their true name. No, no, no. Indeed, we have a beautiful name. Terminal Serenity. Can't say better than that. Hopefully you live up to your name and you're actually a very calm and even-tempered child. Now, you're going to require an awful lot of care and uh, that is going to immediately be a bit of a drain on the, uh, the, the clan. But given how much food we, en we exited uh, winter with, how many workers we can thus support, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem for us. We should still get everything done that we need done. Let's have a look at Andrew. Uh, clown reputation of only 18. Relaxing, well-fed, good talk, large room, entertained. You're sweating a little bit. It's quite warm in there right now. And Katrin over here, clown reputation of 19 as well. Uh, it's not too bad. We're going to get a decent amount of rent from both of you. Hopefully we can continue to get plenty of uh, people popping in. But it is finally time for us to start getting the planting going. And uh, everyone out and about. Terminal Serenity following, uh, following Kyra around a little bit. Needs to have a poop, so someone needs to, to grab them and take them. Oh, that was wonderful. Colin just gave Terminal Serenity a cloak to keep them warm outside. I love that. But uh, we're slowly, little by little, getting everything sorted. I had to go through and uh, I'd forgotten that you couldn't uh, change uh, an entire group of pallets uh, preferences, so I had to go through and individually set that up. I did manage to catch it in time, but uh, these will now freeze in our very small larder, and then once they're frozen, they will be transported out here. It is no longer going to be cold enough to keep them uh, frozen, so I am going to close all of these vents so that as the water freezes here, hopefully it'll be enough to be brought across. We basically need two full pallets pretty quickly to be able to get all of this water to, uh, sorry, uh, two full pallets to keep all of this space frozen. Once we've got that, we can just start adding water directly to this room and little by little get the freezer set up. So we'll probably keep these two pallets in here for the time being, even though that does slow them down walking in there. It'll give us uh, two rooms that we'll be able to freeze water. So we'll get there a little bit closer, uh, a little bit faster rather than we would otherwise and i think that's going to be an important one but we do have two traders so let's go and have a quick check at what they've brought they've brought some peat we will buy some uh, logs i will sell quite a lot of wool hanks that is going to be a very very good source of money moving forward there we go and then the other trader here uh you've got some cheese now that would be very very tempting you've also got some linen cloth equally tempting because i could immediately use that but i'm actually going to say no for now we're gonna we're gonna save that until we can make our own stuff but that is going to be where we wrap up today's episode i really do hope you've enjoyed and are looking forward to spring where we will finish off work on our larder and although it is no longer a high priority i think i would like to get the workers cottages set up i uh, they're doing an amazing job for us right now and I feel a little bit bad that they don't have a proper place to stay. We're also going to need to cycle out our workers to get some fresh blood over here. But that is going to be for the next episode. Thank you very much for joining me once again. I hope you are enjoying the series. And I look forward to any feedback you have down below. But until next time, from myself and all of the clan, do take care, everyone.